Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Oh my gosh, <laughs> what a long 24 hours. I can't believe that I am finally sitting down, relaxing. It feels so nice <laughs> to just to just breathe and talk to you guys for a little bit. I feel like I, well, I went to bed very early last night, early for me. I'll talk about that in just a second, but um, I feel like since I got up today, I have just been going and going and going. Alex got home about a half an hour ago and um, he is already upstairs in bed in his pajamas. It is currently exactly, it was exactly six o'clock when I came out here and it is 86 degrees. It's been a beautiful day all day today. Um, I was thinking about going to the pool earlier today, but there were a lot of people at the pool. So I think when I get done with this, I'm gonna text my neighbor and see if she wants to go to the pool tonight. If she doesn't, then I'm gonna take a walk um, and then just wait and go to the pool like on Friday. Tomorrow it's supposed to thunderstorm all day. So tomorrow is probably not going to be a good pool day. But, you know, in Indiana they say it's going to thunderstorm and then it doesn't. So I don't know. We have literally no plans tomorrow. Alex and I kind of talked about it. I was like, I'm willing to do whatever you want to do. Um, Caroline and her family are going to a park. And uh, so they're doing that. And then I don't think Alex's family is doing much of anything. Um, I think Carlos and Liliana and the kids have some plans. And then Alex's aunt and uncle have some plans. And his mom has some plans. And so... Our friends invited us over to their house. This is the couple that we travel with sometimes. They ask us to come over to their house. We used to do stuff with Melissa and Jason and Aaron and Eric. Like we'd go over to Aaron and Eric's house and shoot off fireworks and stuff like that. I haven't talked to them, so I don't know if they're doing anything tomorrow or not. But Alex is so tired. And so when he came home, I said, are we going over there tomorrow? Because we're supposed to go over there like at 3 if we were going to go over there. They're having like a barbecue and stuff to our friend's house. And he was like, no, I texted her and I told her I just wanted to relax tomorrow. I'm too tired. So my husband stayed up last night. This is, the table's turned a little bit. He would be at work at 8 o'clock this morning. I, um, last night, I'll talk about last night, but when I came home, I got some snacks from the gas station. I have not eaten well on vacation. I mean, I've eaten well, but like not healthy food at all. On vacation, the, the food that we ate on vacation was pretty healthy, most of it. But since I've gotten home, it's just been bad. And I got some crap at the gas station last night, and I was eating it. And I watched two episodes of Sister Wives. And then I went upstairs, and I was just, like, talking to Alex and Boo. But Alex, like, once I came home from going to my meeting last night, I mean, all the way, he was watching Love Island. He's obsessed with it. He's like, you need to watch Love Island. It is so good. And so he was just, like, watching back-to-back -back episodes last night. So I talked to him for a little bit, and then he wanted to watch this episode. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to lay down for a little bit. I honest to God, like, I set my alarm. I don't know what time I lay down, but I set my alarm for, like, 45 minutes. I wanted to get up, and um, I think I laid down probably, like, at 1130, and so I set my alarm for, like, 1215, and I wanted to get up. And Tanya had told me about this show last night. She's like, have you watched the TikTok murder show? And I was like, are you talking about the seven, the seven management 7m management company on netflix i said i did a whole video about that she's like no 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 no. she's like this is about there's like several different stories and like one of them's about this guy who's like wife killed him and stuff i was like i have no idea what you're talking about so when i came home last night i like looked it up and it's called apparently it's called tiktok murders gone viral or something like that and so i texted tanya and i was like is this what it's called and she was like yeah it's on peacock so it's like three or four episodes i wanted to watch that last night and then i was going to do a video about it today um, but I got into bed and when my alarm went off, Alex like had his, his AirPods in while he was watching the show. He was laughing and clapping and stuff. He's so into Love Island. When he woke up, I, when I woke up, I was still so tired and little Boo Radley, like his bed was right next to me and his like head was leaning over and he was like looking at me and I was like, I am so comfortable right now. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go to bed and I'm gonna sleep through the night. I'm gonna get a good night's sleep of like nine or ten hours and sleep through the night. So I did. So I went downstairs and took my medicine and like cleaned up the kitchen and stuff like that and then I came back to bed. I think I uh, finally like went to bed, went to bed for the night. It was like one o'clock, right at one o'clock. Um, and I slept through the night, but I about, well I slept mostly through the night. At about three o'clock, it's like 3.15, 3.30 I think, I woke up and um, to go to the bathroom and I looked over and like the TV was still on and Alex is like sitting up at the back of the bed and he's like staring intently at the TV and I looked and still watching Love Island and I looked at him and I go, 
I go, babe, what time do you have to get up tomorrow morning? He took his AirPod out and he was like, I have to be at work at 8. And I was like, it's almost 3.30. <laughs> do you realize that? And he's like, I know, but I can't stop watching this. He never does that. Like, Alex is somebody that, like, when he knows that he has to get up, he, like, goes to bed early. So, after that episode, he went to bed. So, he didn't get really that much sleep at all <laughs> last night. <laughs> he was texting me today. He was like, I am so tired today. He was like, I learned my lesson by staying up late watching. Because on the weekend, sometimes he'll, like, stay up late and, like, binge watch TV shows and stuff like that. But usually during the week, he never stays up late. I mean, maybe every once, you know, a month or something like that, he'll stay up and watch a show. But very rarely. And so... When he came home today, I felt so bad for him. He looked so tired. I go, are you, are you really tired? And he goes, I'm exhausted. And I said, what are you doing? He goes, I'm going upstairs. I'm going to bed for the night. I go, you are not going to go to bed for the night. I go, did you finish Love Island? And he was like, I have one episode left. So he goes, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to watch some TikToks. I'm going to watch this one episode. And then I'm going to go to bed for the night. I go, really? He goes, yeah, I need to get some sleep. I'm exhausted. So I'm on my own tonight. <laughs> so it's kind of like a bachelor night, which to be honest with you, I really don't mind at all. Um, Cause I'll take Boo Radley out a couple times. I'll walk or I'll go to the pool with my neighbor and um, then watch I'll probably take a nap at some point and then I'll watch my shows and so I want to watch that true crime show about the the TikTok murders gone viral I'd never even heard of it until Tanya told me about it last night she said it's really good so I want to watch that and I want to watch a little bit more Sister Wives I feel like it's so weird like I was waiting for the meeting to start last night and um, when I was like sitting there like a like, couple minutes before the meeting started I was like I I just, like, I just I was like, I can't wait to go home and watch Sister Wives. It's so weird because I, I didn't think that I would be like this and watching it. And the thing is, is that nothing really happens. Like, when if you've watched it before, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's not like, like Vanderpump Rules, when you binge watch Vanderpump Rules, like, every episode there's, like, some major drama. There's not, like, a lot of major drama that happens on Sister Wives. Where I'm at right now, they have... I, and I know everything. I've looked up everything, so nobody can spoil it for me because I know everything. But I'm still, I'm still into it. Um, where I am now, they moved to Las Vegas. Robin just had her ultrasound and found out the gender of their baby, and the other marriages are falling apart. And so they're constantly worried that they're going to get arrested for polygamy. But like that's kind of the backstory. The other story is like the kids are not getting adjusted to being in Las Vegas and all this kind of stuff. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm like halfway through season three. Um, I probably would have finished it last night. It's weird because like some of the episodes are like, like there was an episode I watched last night called The Four Cody's or something. It was about him going to each of their different houses. Cause they're, instead of living in one house, they now live in four separate houses. And um, so that episode was like 43 minutes long, but most of the episodes are like 20, 21 minutes long. So you can like speed right through a season. Um, I probably want to finish it. I probably would have finished it last night if I would have stayed up because I probably would have watched. I would have stayed up till like six o'clock in the morning. I need. I think I needed to get a good night's sleep. And I woke up today and I felt rested, but I was still tired. It was almost kind of like I probably slept too much. Um, so yeah, I was. I was still tired when I got up today, and so I was kind of slow moving. I like drank some coffee. I talked to my neighbor for a little bit. She was telling me she's having some friends over there for Fourth of July tomorrow, and that they're like she was telling me what they're having. They're having like a salmon niçoise salad and she was like he's cooking out the salmon today because we got to put it in the salad and the salad's got to be cold and she was telling me like all the stuff that they're having and she was telling me that her friend's a pescatarian so they were like everything seafood and that they're growing out today because um tomorrow it's supposed to be a thunderstorm so they might not be able to grow out tomorrow so she's telling me about that i was talking to her she was, like, visiting with Boo Radley a little bit. She came over here. She's like, Boo Radley. He loves her. He call, Well, I call her Mrs. <laughs> I'm like, Boo Radley, Mrs. He gets so excited when he sees her. He loves her so much. And then I was like, honestly, I was like, I have filmed so many videos in the since July has started that I was like, I don't know, maybe today I'll just film, like, a vlog. And I didn't even... I, I was like, I had a couple things maybe for my drama channel. And I was like, well, maybe I'll just do a vlog and that'll be it. Um... But I, or like a vlog and like a Peterisms video, because I didn't film a Peterisms video yesterday. So I sat down, I can't remember what the first video was that I did, but I ended up filming six videos with this. This vlog is my sixth video, again. <laughs> it's crazy. Yesterday I filmed, well, so yesterday, before I left, I was trying to upload my drama video, which was taking me forever to upload. And then I was trying to upload my TV video for Sister Wives, which was taking me forever to upload. And then I still had to upload my vlog, but I can only upload two videos at a time. So 
Um, those were uploading, so I had to wait until I got home because I couldn't get those uploaded in time to post them before I left to go to a therapy. And then after therapy, I was going to the meeting with Tanya. So I had to wait until I got home to post those. So I didn't even get to post those till like 10, 10, 15 last night. And then I had to upload the vlog. The vlog actually didn't take that long to upload last night, thank God. So I got it uploaded at like 11, something like that, 11.30 last night. But it was a short vlog yesterday, so that's probably why I uploaded a little bit quicker. Today, I haven't had any problems uploading my videos. So my drama video is uploading right now. I did end up making a drama video um, about Colleen Ballinger. And then I did a PO unboxing on my Peter Does Stuff channel. I did a review of some stuff that I was sent in my PO unboxing. Um, these ranches, these different flavors of ranches. That was really fun. And then I did a Peterisms video about how to help like alcoholics and addicts because I got a comment on my video and somebody was asking me something, so I responded to that. And then I did another booktube video. I've done three booktube videos in three days, which is like totally unlike me, except for back when I started booktube, you know? But I did another haul because some books that I ordered on Amazon came in the mail. And so like right as I was leaving, I think, did they come last night? I got like two different packages. But anyway, so I was like, I'm gonna do this. Cause I was gonna do a review of the Steve Cavanaugh book. Kill for me, kill for you, I'll kill for you. Or kill for me, I'll kill for you. Or kill for me, kill for you, whatever it's called. I was gonna do a review of that because last night, Tanya was like, oh my God, this, that book that you recommended to me, it was so good. And I was like, what book? And she was like, she showed it to me like on her Kindle. And I was like, did you love that book? I was like, I, maybe, I don't know, maybe I've read too many thrillers. Because Nikki loved it, Everett, Caroline loved it, Tanya loved it. I, I thought it was good. I was talking to Nikki, and she was like, I mean, at the very end when this happened, I was like, yeah, that's true. Like, I don't know, maybe it's, it's better than I thought it was, but I've just read so many mysteries lately that they kind of blur into each other at a certain point, you know? So anyway, I was going to do the review of that book. Now my opinion's kind of changed after talking to people, in all honesty. I'm kind of like, maybe I like the book a little bit more than I thought I did. I mean, I gave it four out of five stars. It was a great thriller. Um, I just didn't think, like, who was I talking to? I think it was Caroline, and I said, who was I talking to? I don't remember that I said, did you like it as well as you liked First Lie Wins, which was the Reese Witherspoon book, I think, for January. And she was like, oh, no, not at all. She was like, but it was still really good. That's true. I mean, it was still a great thriller. Tanya was telling me, was it Tanya, I think, who said that she wanted to read a bunch more of his, I can't remember, maybe it was Nikki, I don't remember, that wanted to read more of um, his books. So, I think I'm going to try some more, too. I actually bought some more books on Audible last night. I need to stop. I need to stop buying Holland books, and I need to stop. I feel like it's like the early days of when I was on BookTube again. I bought so many books. I actually, I had like, so I keep a stack of books that I'm always reading, like graphic novels, the short story collections, all that kind of stuff. I keep like a, a collection and it's usually like five or six books. Well, I had that stack. Then I had the two Dave Ramsey books that I bought. Then I had all the books that I hauled yesterday, the romances, which by the way, the people, I don't, if you don't watch my video today, you won't hear me say this. A lot of people explained to me that one of the books yesterday that I bought was like the second one and I need to read the first one first. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to get the first one and read that one first and then the second one. But, um, I had those books on the counter. I had the books that I bought and I showed today. I had them, they were all like on the kitchen counter over there. Like in my, it's like one section. It's like my little office area over there. And so I put them all. And then I had like graphic novels that I finished. I had the Walking Dead compendiums. And so I put them back in the bookshelf. But now I have like the bookshelf all organized how I want it to be. Um, there's only like two bookshelves that are dedicated to books I've already read. The rest of them are books I haven't read. So, and I wanted the bookshelf to be that way. Um, I just wanted to save the books that are like my favorites. The rest of them I'm donating. And so most of the books that are on there, maybe three bookshelves, most of the books that are on the bookshelf are books I've never read before. So when I go to the bookshelf, I can just pull out a book and it's, like, I've got them sectioned into like LGBTQIA plus books, true stories, addiction, memoirs, um, artsy kind of books. It's like one section that I have. All my graphic novels are on the very bottom. Um, yeah, so I have them kind of like sectioned off into stuff. That way, if like I'm thinking of like a certain book, I know where to find it. So all the books, well, except for the Goosebumps books, all the books, and I have some books down on the desk downstairs, but not many now, probably 20. Other than that, every book is in the bookshelf. So trying to have everything have its place. Um, I was kind of worried about that with, I've never been like, my OCD has always been very ordered, like, Okay, it's going to sound strange when I say this, unless some, somebody out there will make sense of this. Probably they feel the same way. 
my OCD doesn't really go in. It's more of like a counting thing. Like I know people that have OCD where it's like everything has to be like color coded in order alphabet. I'm not like that at all. But I do feel like things have their place. Like I want all the books in the bookshelf. I want all my clothes that I can wear in the, the closet so I don't have to go down to the basement and stuff like that. And one of my fears was, was that the more organized I got, I was worried that I had worked on my OCD so much to overcome these rituals, that was I then like putting this into like new rituals. And he was like, there's a huge difference between organization and rituals, right? Like, I mean, if you saw our kitchen, like, I mean, you've seen them in videos, like our kitchen's not super clean by any means. I mean, it's not like there's just like everywhere, like dish, dirty dishes go in the dishwasher after you've rinsed them. They're clean, they go up in the cabinets. Like that's kind of how my mind thinks. But I'm not like, like they have to be like two inches apart. Like my OCD doesn't, affect that. My OCD is more in like steps up the stairs, counting numbers, counting things like that. That's what my OCD has been. And actually, I want to do a video um, on how I've worked. I talked to him about this in my marriage counseling session as I was walking out last night. I was like in our next individual session, which was supposed to be this week, but I postponed it to next week because I was so busy this week with Cousin Fun Day and things like that. Um, I said next week I want to talk to you about like what I talked to you about last time with the OCD because I want to do the video because he had recommended to me to do a video to maybe help other people out there that uh, had suffered from like similar kind of OCD that I have and how I worked through it. Um, and then also it would be a video for me to reflect back on if my rituals started coming back. Then I could watch it and remind myself like ways that I worked through it. It's interesting because I can remember like when we first started talking about it and he said to me, um, I'm always real interested when people say things like with addiction, like when treatment programs talk about success rates. Um, I mean, I think success depends on the individual. So when I first started talking to him about the OCD, he was like, if you do what I tell you to do and like you follow the suggestions that I give you, like we should be able to get work through the OCD in 60 to 90 days. The OCD is something that I, has existed for the majority of my life in different ways. In the last few years, it's been out of control. It's been really, really bad. So when he said to me, like, we should be able to work through this in 60 to 90 days, I was like, there's no way. Like, there's absolutely no way whatsoever, right? And I even said, I mean, I, I say all this stuff to him. And he was like, why do you, like, doubt that? And I'm like, it's because it's so ingrained in who I am. It's so ingrained in everything that I think. And he's like, no, listen, like, if you just follow the suggestions that I'm giving you, things that, I, that have worked, that I've seen work with other therapists and clients with OCD, things that have worked when I've done it with other clients and things like that, he's like, if you follow those suggestions, it will work for you. And combining working through the rituals with looking at the root causes of the, of the OCD and why it exists to begin with. And I really doubted it, honestly. I was like, there's no way, you know? And I don't know when we started working on it, sometime in the fall, but here it is summer, and I would say... Interference wise, as far as my rituals, well, where before I probably had two to three hundred of them that were interruptions to my daily, rich, like my daily life through the rituals. I mean, it was everything from how I sat down here, how I walked inside, how the things had to be, how I walked up the step, everything to today. I probably have like the one that I struggle with the most is rewinding shows while I'm watching it. Other than that, like, I don't none of the steps, stuff like that. And for a long time, it was like in my head, like I would say like, okay, you have to like walk up. You can't like count the steps. I'd think about it. Now I don't even think about it. Now I, and, I, and that was the other thing is I thought at the beginning when I started working through it that I would never get to the point where I just did it and I didn't think about it. Now I'm there. Like I walk up the stairs, I walk through the driveway, I walk down, I mean, I don't think about the lines and the, I don't think about that stuff. I mean, now that I'm talking about it, I'll think about it, but just for like the next day or something like that. Um, like, it doesn't stick with me. I don't think the ritual through. I'm not inventing any new rituals. That was one of the things that he really worked hard on is while, like, a lot of times when you're working or often when you're working through um, OCD rituals, you invent new ones to replace the old ones. Like, that's how your mind works because they're defense mechanisms, right? And so that was one of the things that he worked really hard on was that I didn't recreate. Because I was, I was afraid of that. Because towards the end, that was what was happening. Was I was coming up with, like, I, all the, my number switch. Like, that happened when I was with my other therapist. I didn't understand why my number switch, like, halfway through. If you know what I mean. It's like how many times you count stuff and whatever. And so, um, like, that was really weird to me. It was just like one day my number, it used to be this and then it was this. And it was just like, I was like, I don't know why my number just switched, like, in my head. Um... And so, but anyway, it was like, 
I look back on that and that was in the fall and now it's, you know, July 1st. And I mean, I've done really well for the last couple months. And today I would say there's only like one or two and the TV being one, the other one, I'm saying two or three, like maybe I should say two or three because I can't, I'm not really thinking of them, but there's not really anything that like even checking the alarm in all honesty, like that used to be like one of my big ones, like checking the alarm 50 times and what I don't do that anymore. I'm just like, if you wake up, you wake up. If you don't, you don't. I think that's the other thing is I had to kind of play it out that like, you know, for me, it was a lot of trying to control that if you don't do these things, something bad will happen. And a lot of it for me was facing that a lot of bad things had already happened anyway, and I had no control over that. And that random bad stuff happens and there's no meaning to it. And that really helped me in realizing that me walking on certain steps or counting or doing, like, that doesn't it's so crazy to even say it out loud because as I was doing it, like I knew it was crazy, which I guess is one of the big differences between like OCD and OCPD is that like OCD is like people are very aware of like what they're doing and like they feel like they're crazy as they're, like I felt like that. Like as I was doing it, like I knew it was nuts. <laughs> like I knew that me like skipping every other step wasn't going to save the world. You know what I mean? But like in my head, my head told me otherwise. Like if you don't do this, like a plane's gonna fall out of the sky or something. It could be anything random. It could be something that I saw on the news. It could be, I mean, I, I would just think up like these crazy things that would happen, you know? And so, um, and like even talking about it right now, like this is so strange, but even talking about it now is like, I can internally tell that it's kind of like triggering me a little bit to like wanna do those things or be worried about something. And like, that's it too, right? Like that's in facing that and that, because, oh, there's my neighbor in her VW, hey! That every time um, I feel triggered inside, I can't resort back to what I was doing before. So I want to do this video so that I can like reflect on it, but also because I think there's other people out there that probably relate to it. And I want people to know like, you know, before I like brought it to him, I had such shame and guilt and even talking to him about it because I just... It sounded crazy, and I thought he's probably worked with other clients that have OCD. And I'd seen, like, movies and stuff, you know, and TV shows where people had OCD, but it seemed, like, severe. It seemed like they were doing real severe, like, weird stuff. Not that, like, counting everything in your life isn't weird, but I, that's not what I mean. But, like, what to me seemed, like, bizarre, you know? And so I thought, this stuff is, like, normal. But this is going to sound crazy, but, like, because it was so normal... It almost seemed more bizarre. Like, it would make more sense if it was, like... Like, this is going to sound crazy, but, like, okay, if you want... Hey, how are you? You guys look like you're having fun today in the convertible. What'd you see? Uh, something how was it? It's a story of uh, foster children in Texas. Oh, how was it? It was good. You got your popcorn and your Coke and everything still. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they went and saw a movie. Oh, the little chipmunk. There's little chipmunks living in my hostas. So they keep on running back and forth. Um, no, I lost my train of thought. But the normalcy of it almost felt... Here comes my... Here's what, hey! Am I interrupting? Well, no, I'm filming, but... What'd you go see? Say, how, how was your trip? Have fun. Yeah. Bye. She was telling me all about her movie, and then she was telling me about visiting her dad, and then she was telling me about what they're doing tomorrow, and they're going down during the day to her daughter and son-in-law have a lake house, but they're just going down there for a couple hours during the day, and she was like, I hope it doesn't rain, because, you know, she was like, we'll be stuck inside, and so she was telling me all about that. So anyway, um, I love them. I love all my neighbors. All my neighbors are so nice. They always come and check on me. Do you see, like, they just, like, they see me sitting out, and they're just like, do you need anything? She was like, she, I said something, I was like, I haven't been to a movie in a long time. She goes, I ask you all the time if you want to go to a movie. She was like, we can go. Just pick pick a movie, and we'll go sometime. I was like, okay. They're, everybody is so nice to me in this neighborhood. Um, I don't even really remember what I was saying with the OCD. The one thing I was remembering was that, like, when I would see movies, like, when you see movies and you hear, like, stories, it's always, like, really exaggerated, like, rituals, right? Oh, this is what I was going to say. Like, watching The Worst Roommate Ever, there's one episode where the guy, like, his dog dies, and he keeps it in the freezer for, like, a year, okay? Although that wouldn't sound like what you would think of as, like, an OCD ritual, to some extent it kind of is. Like, fear of, like, 
not dealing with issues, taking it, like, it's kind of like hoarder kind of thing, but like, it goes into that, like, the, the thinking is similar. It's not necessarily OCD, but the thinking is similar of like, something bad's gonna happen, you can't let go of this thinking or whatever. But whenever I like see like in TV shows or movies, it's always really bizarre cases like that. Like it's always the, ex not bizarre, but like the extreme OCD, right? That you hear about. And so in like trying to decide to bring it to my therapist, I was like, well, my traits are, they're not like on that level of extreme, right? Like maybe bizarre was the wrong word to use, but they're not, I mean, they're, but they're things that like you would never think of, right? You know, like, I don't know. But anyway, I'm not gonna make anything up, but they were like normal things, but normal of what I thought was normal. Like, it's not normal to count your steps to the bathroom, count your steps back to the bathroom, everything, a towel has to be placed a certain way, the tag has to be the certain way, tag on the bed has to be a certain way, you know, that everything has to be like a certain way, it has to be turned a certain way, like it doesn't really matter how clean it is or how organized it is, but like all the bottles have to be facing out, like these are things I dealt with like, I mean, when I tell you it was all day and it was consuming, it was all day and it was consuming. It was like literally like if I was in the bathroom getting ready and I was like shaving, like I would look down if like four of the bottles, I would have to turn the bottles so that they're all facing towards me. It's just like, and where do you come up with that rule? Where do you come up with that ritual? Like that's what makes no sense, right? And then like counting back to the bed, counting back to my shoes, making, shoe, making sure that there's only four pairs of shoes on the bed, you know, having to put shoes away. I mean, it's, it's constant. It's constant, right? And so... But to me, I had been doing it for so long that it didn't seem bizarre, when in reality, it was totally bizarre, you know? And I felt crazy doing it. And so there was this shame and this guilt with even bringing it to my therapist, who was a specialist. I mean, he specialized in OCD, right? And so, for I was still like, there was a shame, and like I felt guilty, like, and just embarrassed even bringing it to him, because it was like, He's probably going to think I'm crazy. Like, this is so bizarre. Who thinks this way, right? And I think, like, me, like, the minimizing of it was that I always looked at those extreme cases, even though my situation was just as bizarre as anybody else. And the reality was, like, by the time that I got to him, he was like, I mean, this is, Peter, this is pretty severe. Like, you're doing, it's like all day, every day, from the moment that I went to bed to the moment that I got up. And, um, you know, to think that just a year ago, I was still living that way, you know? Or I'm sitting here right now, I'm like, look, it's like, I'm trying to think of like things like, the hose is just piled. Like before it would have had to been coiled a certain way and then the faucet would have had, the, the hose end or faucet or whatever would have had to been facing out. The chair always had to be, the other chair had to be like sitting a, a certain way so that I could see it, things like that. Fernalicious probably wouldn't even be here because the back of her would drive me crazy. And I looked the other day and I'm like, oh, she's growing out of the back and things like that. Plants had to be turned a certain way. Certain like I always keep this now. I don't even put this like on the table anymore. I haven't even put the table together, right? The new one. But I put it down here. I didn't even keep it on this table because I like to have more stuff on there. That that is something that couldn't have happened. That would have had to have been on the table facing a certain way. It's it was constant, right? It was constant all the time. And to think that I'm a year out from that is really testament to, and when I say this, my, my therapist is like, you are the one that did all the work, but like he made all these suggestions of things that I, I never had heard from another therapist or a book or thought about, you know, and really like, he really, I mean, he didn't force me, but like he suggested that I really face a lot of the things that I didn't want to face um, and really looking at the root causes for it and really looking at where each specific ritual came from and, and the originating ones. Because like at that point, it was like I was making up a new one every day. That was the other thing. I mean, when I started making a list of all the rituals, which I ended up stopping doing, I told them that was the one thing that was not helpful really for me, was making a list of all the rituals because it seemed so overwhelming to me when I looked at the list. I mean, I couldn't even get my list out of the bedroom because it was like 100 things just in the bedroom not even counting the bathroom and the upstairs bed bathroom. And so it was like, and it was all counting, 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 counting steps here. This needs to be there. This needs to be folded. That means a shirt had to be folded a specific way so many times. I would sit there and if I didn't get it right the first time, then I had to fold it four more times, four more times. I mean, it was constant, right? And to think that I'm like a year, like not even a year from that. I mean, I started working on it like September, October, maybe last year. I don't even remember that I'm not even a year out from that and like almost all of those rituals are gone. And even like with the rewinding of the TV, 
I would say it maybe happens like once every third TV show that I watch. It's like before, it was like if it was a 20 minute TV show, it would take me an hour and a half to watch. Um, and in retrospect, like remember, when, like I talk a lot about like I was jealous of Alex for being able to binge watch a show. I think in retrospect, I don't even think I realized that that was one of the reasons why I couldn't binge watch a show because it was so frustrating to get through a show. If I missed one word that somebody said, I had to rewind it. I had to hear. I mean, I could tell you, I listened to every word and knew. Every, I would, sometimes I would have to like turn the closed caption and rewind it to make sure I got the word right. I mean, it was nuts, you guys. It was nuts. Um. All out of this idea that if you don't do this, something bad's gonna happen. Well, bad shit was happening anyway, and it wasn't stopping it, right? Like, that was the hard reality of all of it. But to think that, like, I'm less than a year out from that, and, like, almost all the rituals are gone, like, is amazing to me. And, like, I was gonna say, it's, like, testament to my therapist knowing what he's doing, but he always says, no, it's testament to the work that you're willing to do. He's like, Peter, you pushed yourself. Like, I pushed myself hard. I can remember, there's a, we have a crack in our driveway, okay? Like, it was, that crack alone was probably one of the hardest things, and getting up and down the stairs, because I would always, like, have to count the steps, miss a step, going over that crack, it was stupid. Like, those, they're stupid rituals, but, like, that, that, I never, like, even, I never think about it anymore. Going out to get the mail, walking Boo Radley, taking a walk, I never think about that stuff. I don't even think I could take a walk with all the rituals that I had back in the day. Because all the cracks in the road and all this and all, I mean, I would have been making up rituals left and right, you know? You can't turn down this street, you have to turn down that street, you have to walk so many paces, you only talk 10, then turn, I would have been making shit up in my head left and right. And so, um, you know, to think that I'm a, less than a year out from that, I mean, I, maybe it's been a year, I don't know, I don't remember when I started working on it with him, maybe it was last summer, I don't remember, but, I mean, it's like, it feels like total freedom, you know, it's crazy. So anyway, okay, so I got up today, and yeah, I was like, I don't even know that I'm going to film any videos. I kind of want to just relax and listen to an audiobook. I still haven't started a new audiobook yet. <laughs> I still haven't. I keep on saying it every day. So today's the day that I'm going to start an audiobook. I don't know tomorrow, because we don't have anything to do, if we'll just like watch movies or hang out or whatever. It's kind of up to what Alex wants to do. He's a couple shows he wants to like binge watch that I don't really care to binge watch. So if he wants to do that tomorrow, then I might make a few videos. We'll just kinda, I'm just going to kind of play it by ear. Depend, I'm going to get up when I want to get up tomorrow. If I get up at 4, I get up at 4. I'm not worrying about it. I'm going to stay up as late as I want tonight to watch shows. Um, I'm kind of to the point now where I'm like, okay, I know tomorrow I'm doing like my weigh-in and whatever. Like tomorrow, I'm going to get back on the health track. Today, I'm not too worried about it. I do want to walk tonight, but I really want to walk more just to listen to my audiobook. Um... So, yeah, I was talking to her. She's like, I've been going up to the pool more. I was like, I haven't seen you at the pool. I was like, tell me when you're going to the pool. Because I always tell my neighbor, like, we text each other every time we're going to the pool. Whether we can or, like, she was texting me last night. She was like, I'm going to go up to the pool between 8 and 8.30. And I was like, I'm gone. And she was like, well, you, I just want to let you know that I was going to the pool. And I was like, okay. And she's like, well, I'm not going to go tomorrow, but I might go on Friday. And I was like, okay. So, we text each other. Because I don't know, you know, unless people text me. My neighbor in the corner, she always lets me know when she's going. So, I told my neighbor next door. I said, well, when you go to the pool, she's like, well, I've been going up there, and I'm like, you know, by myself. I said, like, I would love to go with you. Let me know. She's like, okay, I'm going to let you know every time I go from now on. I said, okay. So you got to ask for the things you need in life, right? So anyway, um, got up today, and I filmed those videos, got those videos up. And then um, tonight, and actually, in retrospect, like, if I hadn't filmed any videos today and I had just done a vlog, I would have felt bad. And then tomorrow I would have been like, oh, I want to make a bunch of videos. Like, I didn't do any videos yesterday. So I want to make a bunch of videos. So then tomorrow I would have spent, you know, now I feel like I can kind of relax with Alex being at home. But he's home Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> So, I don't know how I'm going to film videos around all that. But he's like, I just want to relax the whole weekend. I'm like, okay. Um, next weekend, we have a couple dinners that we're doing. One dinner that depends on the, where they go. Because if they go, like, far away, I'm not going to go. Because they're going to probably go out afterwards. And I don't want to Uber home. And he was like, that's totally fine. The other dinner that we're doing is a couple's dinner. And so, I will go to that one. I don't, I think, one's on Friday night, one's on Saturday night. That's next week. The, I think the Saturday night dinner, the couple's dinner, is with the couple that we were supposed to go to their house tomorrow for 4th of July. But it's like our family and stuff like that, so they don't care if we're not going to go. Um, my finger is itching me. But anyway, um, so tonight, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to figure out something for dinner. I'd like to take a walk, go to the pool, even if it's just for like 20 minutes. And then take a nap at some point. I'd like to read a little bit, read some of my books, and also start an audiobook. I, I, I'm a, I, it's going to be the the misfortune book. It's going to be the next one. 
I've been like savoring waiting to read it and so I think that's part of it too. It's like I don't want to like read it and then I'll be done with it like in two days, you know what I mean? I know that's silly, but there's so many books that I want to read. So, and then tonight I'm going to watch probably some more Sister Wives. And then I will also watch that um, TikTok show that Tanya told me about. There's also a new documentary about Andrew Tate that came out. And there's like two new documentaries that came out, I think, today that I want to watch that are like true crime documentaries. I need to look at them and see what they are and put them on my list. So that's today. Last night, um, I took the Uber to, um, <laughs> to, I'm thinking about the Uber ride. I'm taking the Uber, to, or I, last night I took the Uber to our therapy appointment. The guy was really nice that drove me there. He was much older. And as soon as I got in the car, he was like, asking me about my name. He's kept on saying my name over and over and over again. Peter, Peter, Peter. He goes, the Apostle Peter. And I was like, uh-huh. I was like looking, I was trying to like see where I was at on this drama video. So I'm like looking at my phone and my reading glasses on. He's asking me, he's like, Peter, the Apostle Peter. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, were you named after the Apostle Peter? And I was like, I was. I was like, the Apostle Peter and Pete Seeger, the folk singer. Um, and I was like, but mostly the Apostle Peter, St. Peter. And um, he was like, he started this whole thing about like, are you a Christian and, and like Christianity this and Christianity this and, and this is what it means to be. I mean, it was like the whole, I mean, the whole ride there. Like he was asking me questions, but he wouldn't stop talking about like what it meant to him to be a Christian the entire ride <laughs> there in the Uber. He was a super nice guy though. But like, and then like every like five to seven minutes, he would stop and he'd go, Peter, Peter, you're a good man, Peter. You're a Christian. You're a good man. I didn't, literally, I don't think I said one thing, <laughs> except for that I was named after the, uh, the uh, after St. Peter. And that's the only thing I said. And he'd say, you're a good man, Peter. He kept on saying that to me. <laughs> he was real nice, though. He'd swing, like, from one lane to, like, the fourth lane, like, in two seconds flat, though. He'd be like, Arr! made me a little nervous. But other than that, he was a really nice guy. Um, oh, and he got off at, like, the wrong exit, and he went all around this roundabout. And, um... Like, you could tell he wanted to cuss, but he wasn't going to cuss with me being in the car, you know? And so, he like, and I was like, no, you need to go down to the next exit. And he goes, but it tells me here. I go, well, you no, know, it told you to go straight and go to the right. And if you understood this area, it would make sense to you. But he was like, oh, I didn't understand why I was taking you around this roundabout. I was like, because you got off at the wrong exit. And that was the other thing that I said to him. He goes, and then he was like, you're a good man, Peter. Peter, St. Peter, you're a good man. <laughs> so anyway, I got to marriage counseling last night. Somebody asked this on the Q&A, the couple's Q&A. They're like, do you guys ever have any sessions that are like, just like catch up, boring sessions? Yep, last night was one of them. <laughs> last night was one of them. We just kind of like talked about our trip and like the good points and you know, all that kind of stuff and uh, made some goals for some things we want to work on in the next couple sessions. We scheduled another session. It was like, it was, it was a good, I mean, it was a good session because it just was a pleasant session. It was like, you know, a, a calm session and it wasn't, I mean, most of our sessions are calm, but I mean like, it wasn't like we were working on anything. It was really just kind of like, yeah, the trip was good. Our birthday was good. He was asking us questions about that. He was asking us like stuff about like, how do we like travel together and how do we communicate? And we were talking about like, what it was like being around other couples and things we noticed about ourselves as a couple being around other couples. Cause I think that's interesting when you're a couple. Like, I always tell friends of mine this, like, I think I said this on one of my vlogs when we were on vacation. Like, if you're a couple, get other friends that are couples, like, to do things with as couples. I think it's really, it's one of the things that nobody ever said to me before I got in a relationship, anytime. And definitely before I got married, nobody said it to me. And I think it's one of the most vital things to exist as a couple successfully. You need to have friends that are, that are couples that you do things with. Because what you realize is things that you kind of sometimes might blow out of proportion, like you realize that, <laughs> like when Jesse and I were talking on the trip, it was like, she said something, I can't remember what she said. And I was like, oh my God, Alex is the same way. And she was like, yep, Perez brothers. And you know, it's like that kind of stuff, right? Or like if we're on vacation with like Melissa and Jason in Florida or something like that, or we go out to dinner with them, you know? And Jason might say something and Melissa will be like, just stop. You know, like you realize that like, that's how couples are, you know? Um, it's interesting to me, like in the past when people have like criticized Alex and I in a relationship or things about it or whatever, and what it's like, very telling to me is that there are people that are 
not in relationships, not or not in relationships that they want to be in. Because when you're in a relationship, especially a healthy relationship, that kind of goes along with the territory. And when you're around other couples, what you realize is that all that stuff is normal. Fighting and screaming and yelling at each other, we used to do that stuff back in the day. That's not normal, okay, on a regular basis where you can't wait to get out of that person's sight, like that's not normal. But the other stuff, the little like joking, being sarcastic, getting on each other's nerves every once in a while, that is totally normal. Like that's, that's marriage, right? You're gonna have your high highs, you're gonna have your low lows, that's marriage, you know? Um, so, I think it's important to have other friends that are couples that you do things with as couples, you know? That doesn't mean that you don't do things like, we have couples that we're friends with that, like Alex is friends with like the wife and I'm friends with the husband or vice versa, you know, that more, that we do stuff individually with them. But like to do things with other couples, I think it normalizes things for you in a relationship. So anyway, we had our couples counseling last night. Then Alex took me to the kennel and cause Tani was still working. And so she was closing up right as I got there. So then Tani and I, there's so much construction that to get to our home group meeting, it like we went to our home group meeting last night, which we hadn't been to in a few weeks. And uh, in the summer, it's really strange because, like, so many people from my home group are older. And during the summer, they, like, go to, like, lake houses, Florida, Arizona, things like that. Like, they're not just snowbirds. Like, they go for, like, like two-thirds of the year. They're gone at their summer houses and stuff like that or wherever they have. So, we don't start seeing them again until, like, September or October. And then they're home for, like, through Christmas and then they leave again to, like, wherever. So, but last night was actually kind of busy. There were probably 40 people at the meeting. Anyway, on the way there, we got laughing so hard. We were listening to country music and singing and laughing. It was so much fun. It was so good to see Tanya. And um, we got coffee on the way. And then we got to the meeting. We got to the meeting about 10 or 15, 15 minutes before. We were talking to some friends. One of my friends, he and his wife were pregnant, which is really, really exciting. And um, so yeah, it was fun. It was a great, great, great meeting. We talked about um, justifiable anger last night. That was the topic of the meeting. And, um, you know, being angry about things. And I was talking about um, you know, what I shared was really about well, first of all, I don't, like, when I'm in the moment of being angry, I don't know that I know the difference between justifiable anger and anger. <laughs> but whenever I share, unless it's like I'm real serious and like real upset, like I I, it's, I'm, it's a lot of jokes and my share, it's kind of like, I, you know, people think I'm a funny person. I say funny stuff. But anyway, like when I said that people were laughing or whatever, but it's the truth. It's like, you know, justifiable anger are things that you have a right to be angry about, right? Like if you were abused, you have a right to be angry about that. You know, if, if your spouse cheats on you, you know, if somebody steals from you, you have a right to be angry about those things. Those are justifiable anger. But like in the moment, like when you're angry about something, whether it's no matter what it is, you know, like you're running late, you're angry about it. Okay, who are you mad at? You're mad at yourself. But you still have like, I mean, to me, it just, you know, so it's a funny term, but I think, you know, it's an impo important term about deciphering it. But, you know, I said last night that before I got sober, like, I didn't really know how to feel my feelings. Like, I didn't really know how to feel my emotions or my feelings at all. Like, I had no clue. Um, I just didn't. I, I didn't. I either was, like, excited and happy or pissed off and angry. And sadness was one that I had a really hard time feeling. You know, I muted myself so much with drugs and alcohol. So when I got sober, one of the reasons why I stayed sober was because I wanted to feel my feelings. I started to learn to feel my feelings again. I remember like my friend, I shared the story on here that I got sober with. I got, she was the one that called me when I was in treatment. She got sober January 1st and she was dating a guy that was in my aftercare group. And then they broke up because he went back out and started using again. And I remember she got very upset. She was like, you know, the thing that sucks about being sober is that you have all these feelings, but you can't do anything with it. And that's true. You know, like you get sober and you start having all this like rush of emotions and feelings, but you don't know what to do with it. Right. Because it's like, oh my God, what do I do with these emotions and these feelings? I got sober and I started feeling feelings again. Anger was one of them. I don't want that to go away. You know, I don't, I don't want to. I think we live in this world where there's like anger and sadness are bad feelings. Happiness and joy are good feelings. That's bullshit. They're all feelings. They're all emotions, right? They're all ways that we express ourselves and how we feel about things. There's not good emotions or bad emotions. They're just emotions. They're just feelings. But something that I heard years and years and years ago really, really helped me. 
I don't know if I heard it from a therapist or a friend or whatever in a meeting. I don't know. But somebody said that anger is a secondary emotion. And I can remember when they explained it like primary and secondary colors, right? And that anger is like a mixture of other different things. So when you're feeling anger, like orange is just a real color, it feels like to us, as red and yellow, right? But you can't break red down. Like, you can't break yellow down. Those are primary colors. Orange feels real to us as a color, but you can break it down. There are other th components to the color orange. Anger feels real in that moment, right? Like, anger is raw. It feels real, right? But if anger is a secondary emotion, what is it made up of? And usually anger, for me, is made up of fear, sadness, unresolved feelings, Resentment, to me, is what happens to anger if I hold on to it too long. You know, pain, I'm hurt, and so then that turns into anger. I don't think there's anything wrong with being angry in this world. I think anybody that tells you you shouldn't be angry about something, I think it's somebody that doesn't want you to express your feelings. The problem for me is I don't want to stay stuck in anger. I've done that for a lot of my life, where I've st stayed stuck in anger, and then that turned into rage, or it turned into resentment. I'm not healthy in rage and resentment. So I gotta be real careful with anger. I gotta take a look at that anger and be like, okay, what is really making me angry about this? Is, am I upset with myself? Am I frustrated with myself? And I feel like I let myself down. Did somebody hurt my feelings? Like, what is really going on? Why am I really feeling angry, you know? And I have a right to be angry. I have a right to feel anger. We all do. But I just don't want to stay stuck in it. I don't think most people want to stay stuck in anger. You know, I just don't. I don't believe that. I don't believe most people want to stay stuck in anger. So I think it's important to look through that stuff. Um, yeah, so the meeting was great. I had to see so many friends that I hadn't seen in a while. It was really, really nice. Met some new people last night, which was nice. Um, some of my friends that I hadn't, like, they hadn't been, been there in a long time um, since the last time that we were there, like, were there last night. A couple, like, two or three guys. It was really nice seeing them. Guys that were there when I first got sober and stuff like that. It was really good seeing them. And, um... Yeah, it was, it was a good meeting. So afterwards, Tanya drove me home. It was a beautiful evening last night. We had the windows rolled down. We were singing music. She stopped at the gas station for a fountain pop. I actually did not get a fountain pop. I don't really remember other than like at a, like a restaurant when they put it like in a cup. I don't remember the last time that I got a fountain pop. Now I'm kind of craving one. <laughs> and I can't go to the gas station to get one, but so be it. I got lemonade, actually. Last night, I got lemonade. And I got a bunch of crap that I didn't need. <laughs> I got an egg salad sandwich because I was craving one. I hadn't had one in forever. And I got two pieces of cheese and some potato chips <laughs> last night. And then Tanya got, she always gets potato chips on a fountain pop. She got these, I, I want to say Zaxby's, but that's not what it is. I was talking about it in my review channel video. Do you guys know the chips that start with a Z? Whatever those are. I used to talk about them because somebody at the gas station recommended to me the horseradish ones, which were okay, but I didn't love them. But Tani got those, but they're like, the flavor is dill pickle. And so we were in the car. It was so, we got laughing so hard because she was... <laughs> I'm laughing because Alex is, when I got home, Alex is laughing. He was sitting in the chair with his AirPods on watching Love Island. I'm on the couch watching Sister Wives on my iPad with all this crap. Like, okay, back, like this is this is why I can't get, go to places like that and get a bunch of this crap. I had ended up throwing it all out because I was like, I mean, I ate half of it and then I threw the rest. I was like, I can't keep this stuff around here, right? So there I am sitting on the couch. Nikki and I are texting about Sister Wives because she's watched like most of the seasons. And so we're laughing. <laughs> I text her. I texted her something about Sister Wives, and like I sent it through, and like she sent me a text back, and it was just like, bah. And like I had to like immediately, like Alex like looked over at me. I like immediately picked up the phone to call her. I was like, girl, like you, I like, I hadn't laughed like that in so long. I don't know. It was just so much fun talking to somebody about Sister Wives. Tanya last night, she's like, oh, I don't watch that show anymore. I said, girl, I'm telling you right now, that's BS. I said, because I, she goes, I stopped watching that show a long time ago. I go, well, I saw you following some of the wives because I was looking them up, and there you were following. She started laughing. She's like, well, I have to keep tabs on what they're doing today. I go, girl, you've watched every episode of that damn show. Don't tell me that you haven't. <laughs> but anyway, Tanya and I were in the car. We got laughing so hard because she, get these, she gets these potato chips that are like dill pickle flavored. And she, like, opens them, and she's like, she's like, oh, these are good. Do you want to try one? She's like, do you like dill pickles? I go, who don't like a dill pickle, Tanya Jean? <laughs> we got laughing so hard over that. These potato chips were so good. So she dropped me off, came home. 
We were having so much fun driving around last night. Those are the things I really do miss sometimes. I don't like, you know, I, I was to tell my neighbor this. I don't miss driving at all, at all, you know? And I was telling Tanya this last night because um, I think that a lot of people in the past in my personal life were worried that like I stayed home so much and I was isolating. It's not really that. I feel safe at home unless I'm with somebody like Alex or Tanya or Caroline or whatever, my neighbor, somebody that I know, like unless I'm with them, like I feel safe at home, right? Um, but it's not just that. It's just that I, I love our home. I love our home, you know? I feel cozy here. And so even if I could go away every single day, I probably wouldn't, you know? I mean, to travel I would, but like just to go run errands and stuff every single day, I probably wouldn't. Like I don't, I don't miss that. I don't miss the running around. I feel like I did so much of that, like senseless running around and whatever. I just don't, I, I, just, I don't miss that at all, you know? But anyway, and so then Tanya dropped me off, and then I came inside, and Alex was watching Love Island. So I talked to him, and for a second, Boo Riley was being crazy dog, running around. I need, you know, like, it's so funny because he was running around last night. I was like, Boo Riley, you're being so crazy. And, um, I need to remember those moments, you know, like every single day of him acting like he's four years old again. Because there's going to be a day that he's not. And I just get such a kick out of it when he's running around. He's, like, running up and down. He wants us upstairs all the time. So he runs up the stairs and he runs down. And then he, like, looks at us. And he looks at Alex and he looks at me. Like, are we coming? And then he runs back up the stairs. And it's like, I'm so happy. I mean, he's going to be 15. And the little guy still is running around like he's four years old. Now, most of the day today he slept in his purple bed upstairs while I was filming videos. <laughs> he was sitting right next to me the whole time. But, you know, the little guy just makes me so happy. And, um... I can get in my head and be like, he's 15, you know? Like, dogs don't live forever, but I need to, like, focus on those moments where he's, like, running around being like a crazy dog. I love it. So, yeah, so I sat there and I watched, like, that's who I talked to last night. I talked to Nikki, so I, I don't even know if I said that, but I watched, like, two episodes of Sister Wives. On the second one is when I called Nikki, then I went inside after I talked to her, and I finished it, and then I went upstairs. Alex was moving upstairs, too, to watch Love. I thought he was going to sleep, but he's watching Love Island until 3 a.m., which is why he's so tired today. He had fun, though. He had a good time. He was laughing and clapping at the show and stuff like that. He said it's really, really good. So, I'm like, am I already... This is 2830 on here already. I'm like, am I almost at 30 minutes of vlogging on this already? I can't believe it. Uh-oh. So, I don't know what I'm going to do for dinner tonight. And um, he ate a big lunch. They, at work, they took him out to eat for... Oh, he... Where did he go? He went to Cane's today. I told him, because he loves chicken fingers... And we, like, passed a Cane's. I feel like it was in Florida or something like that. And he was like, what's Cane's? I was like, how have you never heard Cane's? You're on TikTok all the time. Like, they, on social media, are constantly talking about Cane's. I said, Cane's is supposed to have, like, the best chicken fingers in the entire world. So, apparently, there's, like, a Cane's right by where he works. And so, they asked him today, like, where they wanted to get Carrie out from for his birthday. And he was like, well, Peter said Cane's is good or something like that. So, he, they went and got Cane's. He said it was so good. He was like, I overate. I'm so full right now. He was like, but the Cane's was so good. I was like, see, I told you it was going to be good. But anyway, so I don't think he's going to want anything for dinner tonight. Um, so I got to figure out what I'm going to do. I'm excited just to, like, not have anything to do. <laughs> Nothing to do. I'm real ex I am excited about that. I know that sounds silly, right? But I'm excited to not have anything to do. Nowhere to go. And just knowing that he doesn't want to go anywhere tomorrow. I mean, if we get anything to eat tomorrow, we'll order it in. I've got stuff in the fridge, you know. I bought fruit and I bought uh, cottage cheese. So, I mean, if we do that, you know, if I, we, if I eat healthy tomorrow, I've got that stuff in there. I've got stuff in the freezer. Um, the camera stopped. I mean, we're not going to go anywhere tomorrow. If I need something, I mean, he'll run me up, you know, to get something. But I don't need anything tomorrow. Everything's done. And, uh, yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe film some videos. Maybe watch some TV. Maybe. So if it's not, like, my neighbor was saying we were supposed to have rain all day today. And it was beautiful. So, she's like, hopefully we won't have any rain tomorrow. Yeah, hopefully not. Because I know a lot of people that have plans. I mean, it ain't going to bother me if it rains or not. It'll just be, it'll mean whether or not I, like, go for a walk or go to the pool or not <laughs> tomorrow. It's like, you know. And Alex is like, well, maybe we can go to the pool Friday, Saturday, and Sunday if you want to go to the pool. I was like, yeah, that's fine. I'd love to go to the pool this weekend. So I haven't even used, well, I think I used one of them, but I haven't, like, with, like, Caroline and I haven't been in the pool, the floats that I bought this year and stuff like that. So I want to use that. So, and read some of my books. And, oh my God, tonight I just remembered 
I know I have till tomorrow, but tomorrow's 4th of July. And the movie, so the movie for this week for Peter's Movie Club is, this is what I'm going to watch tonight. I just, I just, I'm so glad that I started talking about this. I almost ended the vlog. I'm so glad I started talking about this because I would have forgot. The movie for this week is Miss Firecracker Contest or Miss Firecracker with Holly Hunter. And I always try to watch it every year before 4th of July. I love the movie so much. So that will be one of the things that I watch tonight. Um, but I want to wait till it's a little bit darker outside. I'm gonna, you know what? I've got crystal light in there. And I keep on meaning to make like a picture of crystal light. So I'm going to make some crystal light, sit out here, and watch Miss Firecracker Contest tonight with Holly Hunter. If you've never seen it before, it's on Tubi. It's a great summer movie. It's a great 4th of July movie. And um, so, yeah. So, check it out. But I'm going to get off here now. So, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Wednesday. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And I, of course, will be back tomorrow. And I love you guys. Have a safe holiday um, if you celebrate it. And... Um, or if you're just like us and we're going to just like hang out and you're not doing anything tomorrow, then I hope that you have an enjoyable day relaxing. If you have to work tomorrow, thank you for your service. And I hope that your day goes quickly. I love you guys so much and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya.